much for being here. Uh, I'm Yoshua Karsh from the Torah Learning Center. This is, uh, for us, this is a, a, an important moment. It's the beginning of what we think will be uh, an opportunity for dialogue and discussion that hopefully uh, will grow out of this event. And if it has modest beginnings, our hope is that this little spark will turn into a flame of conversation and discussion that will be useful for everybody who finds themselves in need of <coughs> sage advice and counsel on these issues. Um, we, uh, tonight, we have a, a wonderful panel of experts that are going to talk to us. I just I wanted to publicly make it clear that uh, the, this particular panel was put together through networking, and they do represent some very important people uh, in the field, but they don't necessarily represent everybody in the field, and the fact that somebody isn't on this panel is not an indication that they are somehow less important than uh, the, the people that are here. Uh, this is just a, um, a group of people that graciously uh, offered to help us get this uh, off the ground. And again, they are very important. but uh, and. Uh, have a lot to offer us, and, uh, and we're very grateful that they're here. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Bruce, who's going to talk a little bit uh, about his uh, about his father in the memorial, and then I'm going to introduce Rabbi Katz. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, welcome, everybody. This is the uh, fourth annual speaker event in, in my father's memory, and, and this one is personal. This one really hits home. Uh, my mother and father had seven grandchildren. Three of the seven had special need, have special needs. Uh, two of the seven, including my oldest son, David, um, have profound and, or significant um, disabilities. And so this year, I really wanted to do something, um, as I said, that hits home. And my father, for those of you, and many of you here uh, knew him, he was a doer. He was a fixer. When there was a problem and there was an issue, he, he wanted to correct it. Uh, and so when my son was born, um, he tried. You know, he tried to do everything he could. He would always say to me, uh, did you take him here? Did you do that? Are you doing this? And, and he'd get very frustrated because for someone who was used to solving problems or helping make issues better, um, when that didn't happen, he became very frustrated. And I think the frustration is something that all of us as parents, as friends, uh, relatives of, of kids with, and adults with special needs that we all experience. And so that's why when I spoke to Rabbi Karsh a while ago, uh, we wanted to put something together to help people who've gone through, or just maybe now going through what I've gone through and what many of us go through, uh, to kind of alleviate that frustration. Um, so for me, this is uh, personal because it's my way of uh, saying thank you to my father for everything that he tried to do but wasn't able to accomplish. And so by tying his name to this program, I hope that uh, he gets the, uh, the satisfaction that he didn't get uh, you know, when he was alive. And I hope that um, this tremendous panel that Rabbi Karsh and Ali have put together in a very short time, they have a lot to offer. And uh, by that, I hope that uh, people who are here today and, and looking for answers uh, will get the answers that maybe uh, my father didn't have. Um, and I really appreciate all of you being here. It's, you know, when we first started putting this thing together, uh, we didn't really know what, you know, what to do. How broad should it be? How narrow should it be? I think this is an excellent starting point, and hopefully it, it kind of lights that little spark that Rabbi Karsh was talking about, and, and we can move on from here. So I hope uh, you all take advantage of this program, uh, and I thank you for being here. Brian Rubin is, attorney, is an attorney at Rubin Law, a practicing attorney since 1976, and is the parent of three children, one of whom, Mitchell, has autism. Brian's law practice since 1982, when Mitchell was one year old, has been dedicated to serving the legal and future planning needs of his fellow families of children and adults with intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities, and or mental disabilities. Brian feels the tremendous responsibility of not only being the parent of a child with special needs, but also as an attorney with the knowledge and ability to assist other than special needs future planning, 
parents who need to secure the future of children and adults with special needs. Brian is a frequent author and lecturer on the topic of appropriate future planning for families of individuals with special needs. In three weeks, it'll be 37 years my wife and I got married. Thank you. And <laughs> as we were getting married, we started thinking about having a family. Our first child, uh, Nicole, was born. We read all the books. She did everything she was supposed to do, hit the milestones. We were ready to have 30 kids. This was uh, easy. Uh, Nicole did grow up. She's probably more famous now for being Arlene Sword Rosenthal's daughter in law than anything else. But, but she, uh, yeah. so life, is, life is wonderful. Skipping my uh, middle son for a moment, the baby, Benji, uh, did everything he was supposed to do except for four years in Northwestern. I can never retire now because of that. <laughs> law, law school was good with scholarship, but now he's going back for an LLM, graduate law degree, so again, it's, I'll never have to speak with that. In the middle came Mitch, and life took a fork in the road. So the parents in the room can appreciate he's a few months old, and my wife says something's wrong. Well, I didn't listen, of course, 37 years. I still don't listen to her, even though she, I know she's right. So uh, I did, the, I was in the first stage, professionals tell us. We go through the denial stage, and we go through a guilt stage, and the doctor hopping stage. We'll find somebody has to have an answer. Well, Mitch has autism. If you were to describe him, he would be in the lower end of the spectrum. Talking about Kesha being around for 30 some years, Mitchell has been in the Kesha Sunday School for 29 years since he's four years old and attending. And still, it was there today. He was attending. So, Mitch, uh, as he was growing up uh, in, in the early 80s, <coughs> when I asked my mentors, uh, what do I have to do differently? I was an estate planner, I, uh, my undergrad was in accounting, I was with the IRS. I have to do something differently. And everybody said, well, here's the name of a lawyer. And it was a school or a special ed lawyer, but not estate planning, nobody knew. And that, the reason was, it was the birth of special needs planning, as we'll talk about. Uh, court decisions, laws, allowing parents to be able to leave a reserve fund. It would be over and above government benefits, to be able to supplement the government benefits. But Sherry will talk more about government benefits, but the main one being Medicaid, which is like oxygen for our children. It pays for the services uh, that we need, and we have to effectively impoverish our child. Well, it's, it can be done. There's laws that allow us to do it by the use of what they call special needs trusts. So our practice, uh, well, now for 30 years, Benji's been, uh, my now my baby, my partner, uh, for the past three years, my transition plan. Uh, <laughs> along with, we have a, four attorneys in the office. Uh, but the practice is limited to families, our fellow families, not just the special needs trusts and guardianships and powers of attorney, but helping families navigate that maze, the maze of the Department of Human Services, then they have the Division of Developmental <coughs> Disabilities, and the Division of Rehabilitative Services, and the Division of Mental Health, and then they have something called the Children's Waiver, and then they have the Home-Based Support Waiver. And then they have something called SILA, Community Integrated Living Arrangement, group homes. And it's all these acronyms and gobbledygook out there. And there really isn't a one door of entry. Like, okay, my child has special needs. Who do I talk to? It's like, you got to figure it out yourself. So our practice basically is the state planning. But more importantly, our mission is, is to just navigate, help families navigate those aspects of it, where to go. Um, as you mentioned, Benji and I are on the, on the whatever they call it now, the leadership, yeah, or, whatever they call it. Uh, and there are brochures out front about uh, a, uh, uh, what do they call it, that uh, meeting, a, uh, what do they refer to it as the open <coughs> house? <coughs> the town hall. Town hall, hall. thank you. I'm, 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 I'm town hall. <laughs> and there's brochures out there, but here's the initiative of saying, look, you know, my son, Mitch, has been in a group home through Clearbrook, an agency I've been on the board now 20, 23 years I've been on that board. And it's a small group home, three people, and it's very nice. He's home tonight, I have to see him when I get home, but it's very nice. But it's a secular organization, and thank God for Friendship Circle, 
they bring the Clear Brook for holidays and bring in different activities, and it's, it's nice. But the, our community really has been late coming to the table of saying, I want that group home that with the Jewish influence in it. Um, I, that's what I want. I want the activities to be centered around it. And that's what this initiative is trying to do, is saying, look, we may not be opening all the group homes in the, in the, in the community, but we want to be that resource of saying, look, if, you want, if your child is over here, we want to bring resources to them. If they're still at home, we want to be able to bring resources to them. We want to be able to do that, in addition to trying to do uh, the, the group homes, day programs. Yeah, one size does not fit all, and it's very important. And uh, the Rabbi mentioned before about, you know, you, you feel that I can relate to this person. It may not be the same special needs, but I can relate to what they're going through. But we're all looking for that same thing, some peace of mind. And when we're not here anymore, our child is safe, protected, and happy. They're happy. And have a fulfilled a life that they enjoy, and they're, they're happy about what's going on. And that's what we're all looking for while we're still here to have that accomplished. So one of the hardest days of my life was when Mitchell, at 22, was moving into his group home. I, I call it putting the knife in and twisting it and pulling it out because the, the head says yes and, then, and, and the heart says no, I, I, I can't because somebody else will be in, in, in control of my child. Well, it, it came one night, and then I'll pass, to, to pass it on, but it came one night and Mitchell was at our house for his home visit. He's home usually at least once a week. And, uh, and said, it's time to go back. And I said, no, it's not, it's not time to go back. It's fine, you know, time to go back. We call, and it turns out that they were going somewhere. The dancer, they were going somewhere. And it was a lot more fun than staying around with mom and dad. And, so, and that's when the happy tears came, that we, that we passed over this. That, that he talks about our house is the old house, and then there's his house. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's our mission. Uh, it's a family practice. Besides Benji, my wife is a receptionist. My daughter, Nicole, is the office manager. Besides the non-family members that are our extended family. So, if they had it, I will pass it back. I'm going to introduce Sherry Schneider. And I'll tell you that until we met um, Sherry, we didn't even know how much we didn't know. Sherry Schneider is the founder of Family Benefit Solutions, uh, Inc. For over 30 years, Sherry Schneider, president of Family Benefit Solutions and the mother of a child with special needs, has been dedicated to helping individuals with special needs and their families. Her career began as a CLF, where she helped those with developmental disabilities acquire the government benefits they needed. She also helped launch one of the first CLF facilities funded under a Medicare waiver, a Medicaid waiver. As her career flourished, she supervised personnel in Illinois, Missouri, and Nevada to assist hospitalized patients apply for and obtain the government benefits. She now meets with families to thoroughly assess their situation and pursue appropriate benefit assistance programs by personally guiding them through the application process. Her vast experience has enabled her to establish and maintain open, productive relationships with government agencies involved in the entire decision-making process. She is a board member of the ARC of Illinois and is on the faculty of the Illinois Institute of Continuing Legal Education. Uh, education. Families and professionals find her in-service expertise to be invaluable as they attempt to navigate the government benefit arena. We are one of those families. And I love all my family. <laughs> I'd stand up, but it would be the same as sitting down because I'm so short. So um, my name is Sherry Schneider, and I'm a social worker. And what I try to do is there's so many people that can say what you need. But then you say, well, how do I get it paid for? And I don't know, but you need it. So I decided over 30-something years ago, I'm going to figure out how to get everything paid for. So I could go to your house and say, Mom can live there, but you need bars on the bathtub. And you'd say, how do I pay for it? And I'd say, I don't know. So I decided I was tired of the I don't know. So I actually went on a mission. There's actually 33 different ways to get a hospital bill paid. They don't all apply to everybody, but my goal is to get everybody all of the programs and benefits they're entitled to with the secondary goal of keeping as much money in the family as we can. So it's very important to me if you're paying for something, but there's something out there that I don't know why they keep it a secret, but they do. We want to make sure that we have it and that we keep the rules. I actually give my clients in Denny Lab do's and don'ts. 
if you do or don't and you get audited, I can say I told you so. Because I actually says do's and don'ts. We always want to do do's. And that's kind of funny. Um, I actually, on the outside of the table, unfortunately our kids, nor typical kids, every kid doesn't come with a book, but Dr. Spock didn't work for my son. So the Chicago Special Parent Magazine asked me to write a timeline of what parents should do at what age of their child, and it's out on the outside of the table, because it is hard. Um, nobody, You don't really know until you know, and then even when you know, you don't know. The reason that um, I'm able to keep up on things and you're going to laugh is there was one sentence about knowing people in the government. I karaoke three times a year in a dive bar in Springfield to learn the new rules, the old rules, what's changing, what is a bad thing, what's a good thing. And it's so funny because I'm worried about what I'm going to wear and my husband's worried about what I'm going to sing. So it's kind of a, a funny thing that way. Um, one of the major reasons I love my clients is I have a son that was born 10 weeks early, and he's on a breathing machine. Oh. And any 10, 10, day, 10 degree, any 20 degree change in weather, rain or snow, he's on a machine, he can't breathe. And every two hours around the clock, I have to get up and give him a treatment. And even now when he's older, he can't do it because he can't do it. When he was little, we'd just look at him on the couch, he'd be blue and say, oh, I can't wait till he could tell me he can't breathe, but now he still can't. So when any time a client comes in and says, Sherry, you look awful, and I know why, and that's okay, because I have the same problem you do. So it's nice that I don't have to explain, boy, you know, I had a really bad day, because we, you know, my day is like everybody else's day. The other thing that's so cool about what I do and what I really, really love is that I learn, I am so blessed with my son. I learn every day, not just food stamps and that kind of stuff. But my son was in gym once, and he really should never be in gym because he has a, he's breathing with a quarter of one lung. He has one collapsed, and he's breathing with a quarter of one lung. And I guess they had some substitute, and somebody was fighting, and there were teeth flying. I mean, a really bad fight. And they take my son and two other kids down to the emergency dean, and they're telling him, you know, tell us what you saw. Now we want you all to sign this. And my sons looked at him. The other two were seniors, and he said. I don't sign anything unless my mommy tells me to. <laughs> so the two seniors were like, neither do we. So when all the parents came, they said, well, thank God for your son. Our sons would have just signed whoever knows what. So it's kind of neat that, that we can learn from our kids and other people can learn from our kids. Um, I did, There are a few other things I put outside besides the timeline. If you're not involved in puns and your child has a developmental disability or on the autism spectrum, there's a page on there. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through it all. And I did something about the four major government benefit plans. A lot of people confuse SSDI with SSI. And I didn't have time to do my little house with the man that rides the elevator. Um, we do have lots of speeches. Brian and I speak together often. We do it. Uh, the Arc of the Arc of Illinois has a big you ever seen that ARK. Thank you. Has a big convention in April that's really important. It's got lots of speeches and lots of parents you can meet. There's also a discount mall outlet that if you choose to go, let me know. I'll go with you. But other than that, um, that's a, that. My mission is just to help parents because no one helped us. So we hate to recreate the wheel, like this woman said. She said, "I wish I would have known you years ago." So it's nice to know you now. Yeah. Again, there are some other organizations that uh, are not represented on this panel. There, um, uh, Joshana Axler is here, and she's involved in. Um, could you tell us just briefly? Options for College Success. It's a post-secondary program for students with learning challenges, and it's located in Evanston. Okay, so Shoshana is, uh, is uh, a resource that's here tonight, and uh, Libeno uh, is another organization that um, that is not represented here tonight on the on the panel, but they do uh, how they are uh, they have housing. 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 They are an organization that's involved with housing. Um, so. Uh, and again, I want to encourage you, if you, if you, even if you can't, if something is going on in your family and it wasn't discussed tonight, these are still the people to talk to in order to begin your networking, in order to get to maybe there's somebody else who specifically deals with the issues like we're going to be talking about mental illness uh, in a second. But the, the, these, we wanted everybody to meet so, so that you could have a place to start your conversation, um, even if you didn't get the answer specifically to something that you're dealing with uh, tonight. Okay, so, um, all right, now Nikki, you can 
This is just a nice message. Maybe somebody has read it. I read it recently, two days ago. The IDF and the chief of the Mossad has, it, it was on Channel 10 in Israel, that they have a unit, unit 9900, in the top chief intelligence of Israel, which monitors the security satellites of Israel for security and dangerous missions. And they have now, for a couple of years, utilized exclusively soldiers with autism who have proven to be above and beyond the normal soldier's capability in detecting the most minute minutia on the screen. And the head of the Mossad has given the greatest reverence and so with the special class for these special soldiers, they have become highly acclaimed in Israel's security. And I can only top it off with some total ridiculous statement. I mean, God, the Yiddish cup, and God knows every Jewish mind, as well as the Shema, plays its role in our people. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also thank you very much. I also want to mention Heather Wright, who's from Mer from Merrill Lynch Financial Planning. Um, uh, Heather is back there, and um, so she's also a go-to person. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, yes, I practice. Um, Merrill Lynch provides a tremendous amount of resources for families with disabilities, uh, particularly myself. I have a daughter with disabilities, and I have uh, built a practice around helping families from a financial perspective, uh, making sure that they plan correctly, um, working closely with uh, attorneys like uh, Brian and Benji, um, actually funding the trusts and investing and budgeting. And um, we have online calculators and um, we have relationships with um, care management companies um, that help to support the families that we work with. So Merrill Lynch, I put some uh, brochures out on the table, but there's tremendous resources there available. And also, um, uh, JCFS was not represented on this, so you know, they are very important. We'll and be partner uh, with them. Yes, and we can't fire fly. They're part of the, the yes. deal also. Right. Right. They are part of a, pre pretty much everything that yeah. happens <laughs> right. uh, when it comes to uh, special needs programming. Um, and so, um, I just want to mention them. They are they are an indication that there were very important people that didn't. Uh, Make it onto the onto this uh, panel that uh, certainly deserve to uh, to be here. So uh, there's a question: Abby Weisberg had to leave, and Heather Chat's gonna come because I don't know. Question? Yeah. Her. Um, so the question is: Where does a child go when the preschool the child at is not meeting their needs? If there's no diagnosis, and where do the parents go? From? So, um, what we do with Keshet is when there's preschoolers, we work with the JCCs um, for kids that need support within that program. Um, but the other thing to do would be also to look at a, a school district um, for testing to help you to get you that initial diagnosis to then help guide a little bit. Under federal law now for early intervention, you go to a local school district, they will pay for the initial testing, and then there is a zero to three program before they're entering the school system, or before the school district is paying for it, the state will be uh, paying for that zero to three program age, from birth to, to age three, uh, providing you know, therapies and what makes sense. But uh, I would definitely check with the, the local school district to tell them what testing for special needs. Yeah, Clearbrook is a contract for, for the North Northwest uh, Cook for the intervention. Um, somebody else had a question. Um, what do you think is the role of faith communities in, in creating bridges between people with disabilities and people without? Disabilities connect them with employment 
recreational relationships and living opportunities in the even one. Is that like three people here? <laughs> 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 I said rabbit. What are we looking at? I'd say that. And can we include am I in this too? So I can tell you, I'm not sure what age we were specifying. Um, okay. So I think that someone had mentioned earlier, the Abby, that there's a lot of opportunities that, that are that Cash It has are within the community, whether it's volunteering, whether there's learning opportunities. Um, it's, about, it's about making those initial phone calls, I would think, to find out what what is it that your child is looking to do. If it's looking for a shear, so we have classes that, that are given in my neighborhood in Rogers Park. Um, I know I'm sure there are classes given out here. There are always students where I where I'm at the I do crown every day who are looking to do chesed. There are boys in the Skokie Shiva. There are girls in Hannah Sachs. There's a yacha. There's a, there's a tremendous amount out there. Um, to form relationships. As a matter of making the calls to the people, say, this is my child, this is, this is his or her need, and who do you suggest that we call and to try and make the proper shidduch, to make the proper relationship uh, in order to make those connections. But there are certainly opportunities at every level, whether it be learning, whether it be social interaction, um, for, for pretty much every child. What about every adult? When, when I say child, I, I, Orthodox Jewish am I? Right, so, so what I'm referring to, the, the students that I learn with range from, me myself, range from students who are 14 year old in high school through about 23 and 24. But there are programs beyond that, and there are programs for children much younger also, where I know that I have students that I teach, whether they be at Airy Crown, who will go to families' house on Sundays, or go to families' house on Shabbos, and, and have those relationships. Can you suggest one? Okay, specifically I can. Um, 45 year old. Roseanne man. Corcoran. If you call Roseanne Corcoran, she's through the, um, Council, of Jewish elderly. Through the Council of Jewish Elderly. She has a lot of programs for kids with MI who are older kids. Adults, Everybody's a kid. Support Adults, groups. support yeah. groups. They do barbecues. They do all kinds of things. Yeah. Suzanne Corcoran. No, Roseanne, Roseanne. Corcoran. I got was it. Council of Jewish Elderly. If you email either one of us, we'll get you a contact. Yeah. Right. On Tui. If you email one of us, we can give it to you, but it's, it is mostly with MI. And MI is mental illness. Oh, I'm so sorry. Those who didn't know what MI is. Mental, you MI. know what? I have an mental. acronym sheet that has all the little, you know, <laughs> the alphabet soup of everything. I should have brought it. So they do it with people with mental illness. They do it with people with developmental disabilities, but it's all, it's all, it's recreational. It's meetings. Right. It's okay. all, you need to call Roseanne Corcoran, okay. and I'll get you her number. And if you're in full contact info, it's, it's on the table out there. It's a little teeny gray card. I got everything. Then you got it. It's in here. No, I got one then. Okay. Yeah. If you got a gray card, you got me. Okay. okay, we have one more question. What is the role of clergy and congregational leadership in raising awareness about people with disabilities and integration? Question. It's a great one. Well, this month is uh, Jewish Disabilities Awareness Month, and Keshet was a big part um, in working with different synagogues all over the Chicago area from uh, everything from Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and we had um, lots of information, lots of different synagogues did have different Jewish disability um, Shabbats that were going on that, that we were part of. First of all, I want to uh, for, for that initiative. I know, uh, besides locally here in Northbrook, I'm also aware of other shows, uh, especially in Chabad, that have uh, taken part in this. Um, and the, I guess the question of responsibility from clergy or rabbis uh, in this situation, and obviously, I, I don't think anyone here would disagree that responsibility exists, and um, every rabbi of Every congregation uh, either is aware or should be aware of this, and uh, not just in theory, but in the joke of the rabbi in the concrete. So, um, I sort of believe something that's necessary and trying to have been made, and, and I think uh, if there is someone who has difficulty with this, they should see someone here and perhaps. Uh, 
more education to take place for that specific uh, institution, that rabbi. Uh, I think what's really important too is that there's programs now. Those programs happen because somebody made them happen. So if there isn't a program for our children or our child or our neighbor or our grandson, we need to work with an agency to make it happen. Because everything we have now didn't just happen. Somebody said, like Danny said, let's do this, let's do that. That's how it happens. So if there isn't one, we're not going to say, gee, it's really too bad for me. I would have said something worse about we're being reported. Gee, it's too bad for me. We don't have a program. But we can all work together to make one happen. If so, you think about it, it's 30 some years ago, sitting around a milk, milk waxwax house, a bunch of couples around the, you know, sitting in the living room, first in Kesha. Right. And that's all it was. It was a, just a bunch of couples saying, we all have a problem and there's nothing there for us. And that's how things get started. So, yeah, but I think that, uh, as somebody mentioned before, it's just an unbelievable resource because you're not going to get the dead silence at the end of it. It's somebody will follow up. Somebody will say, okay, let's look into this. Or if not, we'll give you somebody to talk to. It's not going to be a dead end. Or here's three other parents that have the same thing that I started with me. I had a lot of clients that have Down syndrome, children with Down syndrome. And they, they had different issues. And I said, you know, with privacy, can I give them your name and your name and your name? And now they're having, like, a, I think it's like a little lunchy thing where the moms go out and the kids, somebody's watching the kids, and they're all talking. I mean, it's just, and it started because someone said there wasn't one. So I think we, instead of saying, God, you know, where is this? We, should, we can make one if we need to, if we have to. I think anecdotally also that, it, you know, the question really was, was asked, what, what are clergymen being, what are they doing to make, to raise awareness on the issue? And I'm, I'm not a congregational rabbi, um, mainly because my wife will let me be. Um, but I, and my mother wants me. That's okay, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but, but I'm not a congregational rabbi. But a few years ago, when Ma Amina started, and I, you'll, you'll hope you mind me sharing, but you know, Denny, that they, there was a new rabbi who just come to, to her synagogue, which is also my parents' synagogue, which I'm not going to the rabbi, that, um, <laughs> that, uh, and then he said, you know, Stu, I'd really like you to meet Rabbi Engel and show him what you're doing, I mean, and, and, and expose him to it. All congregational rabbis of any reasonable sized congregation are pulled in multiple direc directions. And if it's not a large congregation, they're probably pulled in more directions because they need they have multiple jobs to support their families. So a lot of it needs to be a self-driven effort where when I know when Denny said to, to Rabbi Engel, I want you to come for an afternoon and see, and see what's going on at Mami. And she called me and says, Stu, I'm bringing Rabbi Engel. Is that okay? Of course it's okay. I'd love to have him. And he came into to the classroom and I was learning with, with Jonah and some of the other boys. And he's like, and I remember Denny called me after because he was so impressed. You were learning Chumash and Rashi with the boys. Yeah, that's, that's what we do. And he was completely unaware that such a program even existed. So if you know of a program that exists, it really is the responsibility of every individual to go to their clergyman and say, Rabbi, this is a wonderful program that my child, nephew, niece, grandson, whoever it may be, is involved with, and you really should see it. And, you know, we, we, we say the logic of the is the Shmi, the Shmi, the Shmi, the There's no comparison with seeing it in, uh, in, in hearing about something. So to go and to bring someone to see a program in action really can make a huge impact. And then you don't know where it's going to be. Is that going to lead to the rabbi's next sermon in shul? You, you have no idea. But to make them aware of it and to bring them to visit us, I think is critically important. Um, there's a specific question. I think it's for you, Benjamin. Uh, describe the group of siblings with special needs, purpose, etc. Your group. So, yeah, so I'm the president of, of CIVS, which is uh, the Illinois chapter of a national organization called Southern Leadership Network. Uh, and we uh, provide resources. There's a lot of parent support groups out there, but there's not really any sibling support groups other than, than ourselves and our counterparts in other states. Uh, we're in about 22, 23 states now. Uh, but basically we have, we do bar nights and uh, we go out to like ball games and stuff. So we do some social activities, these, these three, four times a year. We also are there as a resource. We have a listserv that people post things on all the time. We have a um, Facebook group. Uh, they'll post things on all the time and things come up with their siblings and we have a huge broad range of uh, ages for people in their 20s, people in their 70s, uh, people who work hopefully many, many years from when they will be uh, the primary, whether guardians or in any way uh, advocates for their sibling and their parents will hopefully be around for a long time to individuals who for many years already have been acting as the primary care providers or advocates for their siblings um, to provide that perspective that for each of us. Uh, so it's a great organization for parents that have other kids. 
uh, that uh, would be interested, please let me know if there is information. When you say you do social activities, is that including the, the special needs siblings? Um, most of our activities are just the siblings. Um, to focus you know, on, on them, you know, one of the biggest uh, issues, especially with younger siblings, but is that you know the, the amount of attention that ends up being focused on uh, on the other siblings ends up being diminished because there's just not enough time in the day. Um, so one of the one of our big things is just to kind of have that camaraderie that where it's just about us um, and, and focusing on, on our needs and our, our concerns, our personal concerns about our own lives and how they might be impacted by our sibling, um, and something that really could only work if it's really just us. I've often said, you very often have to remember that in terms of parents being impacted by having a child with special needs, but we sometimes forget that the siblings are significantly impacted. As Benji said, there's only so many hours in the day, and one child or is either a disproportionate amount of the time has been spent. Um, and while I see over these 30 years, a good portion of these siblings be going into the health sciences or going into social work and those kind of areas, uh, it's still, you start thinking about it, and they're going to have that responsibility for many more years than we have as parents that they're going to be there for their sibling. And they, they need that, that, that network, that resource of saying, this has happened to, to me and my brother or my sister, is anybody else uh, face that? And where can I get more information? And it's sibling to sibling networking is what we're doing. I want to thank everybody so much. Ben is just going to finish with a couple words. And then the, the, our parents are going to be available for a few minutes. It's getting late. Um, I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I want to also thank everybody for coming, and of course for Abby for inviting everybody. And um, just to say that I think the most important thing that I got got out of tonight, especially, is that I don't know who's what everybody's situation is here and who has relatives and children with special needs, but the important thing is that something is out there, and you just have to advocate for your children and ask for it. And sometimes when you ask for it, uh, they, if, you, if they, the person can't give it to you, they will certainly drag you to the person. Thank you very much.